So a lot of clients that we have, ones that are starting up companies, ones that have been in business a long time and need to make the transition, it comes down to Office 365 or G Suite. I always kind of joke and say the email wars are over. And I'm someone who is a longtime system admin who used to run mail servers in the 90s. That's actually my first thing in Linux was uh, learning and building and maintaining SendMail and all the filtering systems that we had to build around it back in the earliest days of you know, managing those locally at companies. So I was a long holdout before I ever switched to, and we currently use G Suite for my company and got off of a, you know, in-house mail server. And over the years, I've also been an exchange server admin. I've set up the, you know, Barracuda uh, spam filtering in front of it and all the things that used to take to maintain a on-prem server so your email was hosted on-prem. Those days are gone. I don't see any value, even these large companies anymore, of putting in your own physical mail service. There's some rare use case and one-off niche uses maybe, but for the most part, it's come down to Office 365 or G Suite. Those are the two uh, winners of the war that was the who's gonna have the best mail. And like I said, I know there are a couple other one-off still Linux ones out there. Uh, I still maintain one Linux server because I want to for my one of my personal email domains and, but for my business, I had to move to G Suite. It's the best way to get out of the spam uh, problems. It's the best way to get you off the spam list because trying to host it not on one of the big companies, uh, it, you get filtered and caught up and it, yeah, it's generally a headache that we still deal with. Back to the topic. Which one should you choose? Well, let's look at them first. And I am talking about G Suite as in the paid hosted at your domain version. So the basic charge is $6 a month. Business is $12 a month. We're actually using the business one ourselves. Um, and then the enterprise for $25 a month. And as you go up in there, they have a few you know extra features, Vault, mobile management um, that you get with both of these, but a little bit more enhanced security and obviously like the unlimited storage options for Drive. Now with G Suite, it's all web-based applications, which a lot of companies like. For example, we have a client that has about 60 offices around the US. Each of these offices only have a handful of people in each one, and they are completely embedded in their workflow with G Suite. And they love it. They love the shared document. They love the granular permissions that it gives um, all through a simple web interface that they find very intuitive and easy. Granted, different than Microsoft's methodology, but um, they manage all their workers. They onboard them or in the terms of offboarding them, they can quickly offboard, move all their documents to one place. And if the laptop that these people have deployed, and that's how they were, they've done the whole company, is as a series of laptops, it's completely irrelevant if something happens, coffee gets spilled on it, it dies, they just log back into a G Suite account. As a matter of fact, they have a handful of Chromebooks because they're just doing everything as applications and processing in here. And G Suite, if you get extensive with it, you can build an entire application workflow that ties into the documents, et cetera, uh, to build it as part of an integral part of the business. Now let's look at Microsoft Office. The Office 365 business essentials, I don't really think we have any clients on the $5 a user a month. Most of them go over here to the $12.50 a plan. And that way they're getting the full web and mobile versions of the Office application. So yes, they do have mobile versions and online versions, much like G Suite has. Granted, I'm gonna, I really feel that G Suite is a very mature platform. They've been doing it longer than Microsoft. Microsoft has come a long way and it's gotten much better using their online and web versions. They're actually uh, quite good compared to what they were just only a few years ago. Um, email, calendaring, file sharing, et cetera, et cetera. Team communication, they've actually done a nice job on this with their new Microsoft Teams. Google has their own system uh, to compete with it called Hangouts and Hangouts Meet. So still on parity with a lot of that, but this is where things get different. The desktop versions of applications for PC and Mac. When the clients come to us with the decision of which one they want to choose, well, does their software process have a deep integration with the software on the desktop, as in Microsoft Office, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Outlook, especially Microsoft Outlook. Some of the insurance providers we have, some of the uh, clients that we have that are uh, doing health insurance or even doing some of the uh, vehicle insurance, a couple of them have applications that write quotes and look for the web application. Matter of fact, we have a construction company. They all run this enterprise desktop application that doesn't just send emails. It doesn't send them through the application. It looks for Outlook, builds an attachment file, et cetera, and does this. And some of the quoting software we've seen in the healthcare industry, same thing. You can't work it without the Microsoft Outlook application. It's an integral part of the workflow. Therefore, you would assume, and mostly true, that we just give them Office 365. There's a couple exceptions because they have only a section of the business that does that, and they just go ahead and pay for Outlook, but still use G Suite because there is, not through IMAP, but there is an integration you can do with an Outlook connector tool that Google writes to bridge Outlook in the G Suite and make it work. It works fairly well, um, 
but obviously most of those companies, we're gonna lean them over towards the Office 365 platform. And like I said, we have a big mix of clients on both. Now the one hidden cost, so I said 12.50 a month for both is where a lot of the clients are. So that's similar in price, except the spam filtering. G Suite has some of the best spam filtering out there and it just works. And what I wanna show you is one couple big companies using it. So if we go over here and I grab StockX because they're a local company. And you notice how their mail goes directly to G Suite. Um, they don't put a proxy in between it. And we'll actually um, dig, there's some other bigger companies using it. If you're wondering if it scales for big companies. Uh, Twitter employs quite a few people, same thing. Here they are also using G Suite and it's directly there. And what you'll see with, if you use a company for spam filtering like Mimecast, and you're gonna get the point here in a second, you'll see where people redirect all their mail to Mimecast and then pull it over to Office 365. And there's a lot of different spam filtering companies. And Microsoft has just left that market open. And I call it kind of the hidden cost when you have an Office 365 account please, we really encourage our clients to do this, is put spam filtering in there. Matter of fact, we had a client that through their purchase, we helped transition the company. They were on G Suite. We moved them over to Office 365 because of the new workflow they had with the purchase and the uh, new custom ERP program they were using was all gonna be embedded with Microsoft Office, so they made the switch. They couldn't believe, they forwent, they decided not to do the spam filtering at first. And they're just like, there is a, where, how are we getting all this new spam? I'm like, it was just filtered out with Gmail before. Gmail's spam filtering is excellent. They, because of the G Suite and the Gmail product, they have a better position in the market. They have a large percentage of the email traffic because of their not business, but personal use. Gmail addresses are kind of ubiquitous. It seems to be the most popular email service. I believe it's is by quite a bit right now. One of the most popular ones next to Yahoo. But I think most of us that have a Yahoo address, we have three Yahoo addresses because it's where we sent all the junk mail in general. But generally speaking, the actively used emails are in Google. What does that mean? Google has a lot of insight into what looks like spam and things like that. It's a it's a game of volume. Once you have that kind of insight, you gain a lot. Microsoft has just decided that's a third party product. We'll just kind of say, hey, third parties can do that. And so we push our clients to having a third party email um, spam filter that's Microsoft friendly and designed to work with it. And there's plenty of them out there. And it's one of those things you have to consider when you're looking at the cost. And not the cost drives all of this. Honestly, you know, I see people really hung up on the cost, but the, when you look at it from what an employee cost to have or what other costs are in the business, they're generally a lot higher than this. But those are the kind of uh, guidelines we have on there is whether or not it's an integration, whether or not they're going to uh, like the interfaces and what their comfort level is. Now, the last couple things that really drive this are pain. And what I mean by that is the pain of transition. So we've seen clients successfully pull this off and we've seen the protests, so to speak, that the users had um, almost childish like of they don't wanna learn a new interface. They're used to using Outlook and Outlook has been very similar with minor changes over the years. So you have someone who maybe have a position at this company for the last 10 years, 15 years or longer, and they're going, I've always used Outlook, it's what I'm comfortable with. And they're like, we're moving to G Suite, we're sick of loading desktop applications, and there is no doubt that Gmail requires substantially less support than Outlook. Uh, Outlook is a desktop application, it's more complex, it's based on tons of legacy code. You have people who don't clean their inbox up very often and think they can keep every email with every attachment until Outlook reaches a size that becomes unmanageable, starts crashing and requires some intervention by um, one of our techs to repair whatever went wrong with Outlook and start cleaning it up again. So companies can make that decision to go, we're just gonna go Gmail. Suddenly we aren't loading any applications on here. Uh, we're gonna iterate our workflow and then you have that pain. That pain becomes a cost center for them because they have to retrain those users. They have to decide, um, I've seen people threaten to quit their job if we don't uh, keep my outlook. And they're not, maybe they will or will not follow through on that from a business owner standpoint. You do have to then decide what is the value of that person? Are they so stubborn? Will they cause a disruption in the productivity, which will cost revenue to the company? Is it worth the switch over here for the overall convenience of having everything web-based? Or can we just find a compromise and maybe use the web-based version of Office 365? Because once we're not loading applications on the desktop, life gets a little easier. Uh, but these are some of the challenges. They're both good products. I don't have a... Uh, 
hatred for either one of them. I think there's too many times people in tech get decisive. Like if you use one, you must hate the other, et cetera. We support both in our infrastructure. We're actually quite good at G Suite and it's earned us quite a few of these larger clients that do use G Suite. Uh, helping them administer things. But overall, we actually find it to be very m easier, much more intuitive to do. Office 365 still has some, You, I'm glad they offer you so much PowerShell in the back end, but that also means it sometimes can be more complicated to manage and get certain things to function in there. Uh, so set up, and it does have a little bit more complicated of a dashboard to manage, but it's still a good platform and a good product despite needing the spam filtering, um, which is, certainly something that you know you have to consider when you're doing it so my thoughts are yes we use both uh both are good both are great platforms you just have to think about what fits in your business and which one works for you and for us it's g suite we've deeply integrated into our business uh maybe i'll do some more videos on it but i have some if you dig around i've done at least a couple of videos in the past talking about it it's it is part of the integrated workflow that we do here all right and thanks and thank you for making it to the end of the video if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.